Alrighty. Okay, guys. So like I mentioned, I'm going to have you solve some puzzles. Oh, one more coming in. And we're going to be focusing on endgame puzzles today. So I'm actually going to be giving you all uh, some studies. We're going to start off with, you know, some relatively simple, simple warm up and then um, move on to some more uh, challenging stuff. Um, OK, I'm going to get the first one up on the board here. And uh, this actually isn't a study. This comes from a real game, but it had like study like solution. It's black to play and uh, and win. Actually, I'm going to set up the timer. I'm going to give you guys three minutes for this one. And uh, guys, I'm going to close the chat just because we're we're just going to be solving today. So I don't want anyone um, sending you know the answer by accident to everyone. So send your answers to me. I'll try to give you some uh, feedback if uh, if I can. And uh, yeah, we'll just go one by one. And then at the end of the class, um, I'll, uh, I'll open up the chat again. OK, yeah, very good, Lyndon. Nice job. So make sure not to give me um, just one move, guys. This is not a one move solution. So if you just give me the first move, it's not enough. And make sure you guys are looking for something very concrete. Yeah, nice job, Sepper. And I'm gonna stick to you know our system with the exclam. So if you finish your answer with an exclam, uh, that means you want to get called on and explain your answer. Okay, I'm gonna call on uh, Lyndon to give us the answer. Lyndon, go ahead. So Black's first move should be Knight C3, and if White does not want to lose the A2 pawn, he will play A3. But now Black hits White with this nice move Knight E2. Point being that knight of four is the threat, and if king takes e2, b takes a3, and white cannot stop the a pawn from promoting. Okay, yeah, very good. Exactly right. Nice job. Um, okay, so not not too hard. Black starts with a very concrete move, knight c3, hitting the a pawn. Now, if white just lets us take, then okay, that is obviously very good for black. So a3 has to be the critical move. And uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today with endgame studies is that they are very good at... Uh, teaching you how to look for the opponent's resources because it's not enough just to find the first move you also have to find the opponent's best defense otherwise we're kind of just guessing and we don't want to be guessing during the game that's how you end up making mistakes so study like yeah very study like in in the sense that this is the only uh, way for black to to immediately win in the position it's also kind of aesthetic like this move knight e2 definitely not obvious a uh, few of you suggested this one, which I think is a good try because you're going after this pawn. But all right, once we see knight e2 uh, threatening this and deflecting the king away from being able to defend against the a pawn, uh, that's clearly yeah just winning for for black. Bishop has no way to get back. Um, so studies are very cool. Uh, I feel like we probably talked about them before, but um, maybe. You guys in the chat can can write some stuff like what is the benefit of, of solving a lot of studies? Why are they why are they useful? Does anyone have any any thoughts or maybe has heard something on the benefit of endgame studies? Because a lot of coaches really uh, really really like them for for good reason, and uh, myself uh, included. Yeah, improves calculation. That's uh, definitely correct. Uh, helps expand your creativity. Yeah, it lets you think creatively. Absolutely. Because um, yeah, studies usually have very kind of non-obvious answers, right? They force you to really come up with kind of very clever uh, solutions and also very precise solutions, meaning there's only going to be one uh, answer and, and you have to be uh, extremely accurate when, when finding the, the, right, the right line. Um, oh, James is asking about... Uh, good sites to find studies you know it's honestly not easy there isn't like 
there are a lot of collections out there, but they're kind of difficult. And there's some books with studies. Uh, like Dvoretsky wrote a book called uh, Studies for Practical Players, which I actually have here. I don't think I chose any puzzles from, from this book. So if you've seen this one, you don't have too much of an edge. Um, there's also some, some databases of, of studies where you can find, uh, find a lot. Um, okay, let's go to our next one here. They're gonna gradually, just gradually get, you know, harder and harder. I'm gonna try to uh, challenge you guys a little bit to, to be precise here. And uh, okay, let's go to, let's go to this one. Valid fan, unbelievable. Uh, or help. <laughs> but, yeah. It always, it kills me with the invalid fan. All right, let's try a different way. Uh, yeah, that's fine, Austin, go ahead. Okay, this is a uh, white to play and win. I'm gonna give you guys, um, let's do three minutes for this one again. That's true, it wouldn't be that hard to set up the puzzle, that's absolutely right. Okay, very good, Alice, very good, uh, Sepper. Nice job, Alexander. Linden, also good. Sarvagna, nice job. Timothy, nice job. And also, nice job finding, let's say, Black's uh, trickiest defense. Very important here. Okay, um, let me call on, uh, I think, Sepper. So I said bishop to c6 mm -hmm. because I want to get my bishop onto the a2 g8 diagonal. Yep, very good. So well, what's our threat here? Our threat is knight g6 and bishop d5 check. Right. And yeah, let's go so, through some of the lines, yeah. For example, if black plays king g8 immediately, mm -hmm. then you have bishop to d5 check. Mm-hmm. And after king to f8, there is knight to d7 check. Good. And the rook falls. And then can you win this position? Uh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> can everyone win this position in the in the Zoom chat? Or who feels who would feel uncomfortable? Maybe that's that's a better question. This is an important one uh, to know. Oh, someone did it in Blitz once. Nice. It's it's not easy if you haven't uh, practiced it. So my advice would be to play this against uh, the engine or like a training partner and actually practice it a couple times. Um, you give yourself like five seconds delay or 30 second increment, you know, uh, make sure you can do it with like no time on your clock. That's how that's how you'll feel confident that you can do it in a game. Otherwise, your opponent, you know, can threaten, you know, you could be up a piece and they threaten to take your last pawn and you're going to be nervous because you're not sure if you can, <laughs> you can win it. Um, okay, Sepper, let me uh, actually ask you to unmute again. We'll go through the other lines. Uh, what else can okay, Black try so here? Mm -hmm. Rook b6 doesn't work, knight g6, and it's interference. Yeah, blocking the, the possible pin and giving you this mate. Very good. Um, okay, and last line, Black can try. All right, rook d8, uh, there's knight f7, and um, rook c8, Black just uh, gets mated. Maybe uh, black can try uh, rook f8. F8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now there's knight to g6 check. Mm -hmm. King to g8. Bishop to d5 check. Rook to f7. And now there's an important move, knight e5. And knight e5, yeah, only way to win the rook for free. Okay, black's last try, king h8. 
Well, now this knight takes up seven, check. And knight of seven. Yeah, very important not to take with the bishop. Here, okay, this is pretty simple to see, but uh, fair warning, guys, there will be will be some stalemates uh, in, in today's puzzles, and stalemate is one of the key ways that uh, black often tries to trick you. So again, fair warning, we got to watch out for, for stalemate. Um, okay, very good. Uh, let's go to the next one. And uh, let's see, um, let's do, all right, we're gonna keep it, keep it simple, slowly amping up the difficulty. Let's see if I can get the fen in. Nope, not possible. Um, do it a different way. Okay, uh, white to play and win. <laughs> just, <laughs> I always forget I can just set it up. Um, all right, for this one, I'm gonna give you guys another three minutes, starting now. Okay, okay, so this one uh, is starting to get a little tricky, uh, which is totally fine. Um, so, uh, a few of us wanted bishop to d6. So basically, uh, what is black doing here? Black wants to go king b7, take the knight, and, and make the draw, right? So if white doesn't uh, defend this one, plays a3, this of course is a well-known draw, and white is never going to win that endgame. So basically white has two options, bishop d6, bishop c5, and we have to choose accurately between them. So on bishop d6, black takes, knight gets out, king is going to c5, knight a4, uh, king is going to b4, and if knight b2 here, there's king a3, and we're not taking the knight next, we're taking the pawn, right? Knight c3, not in time. Black takes a4, and then king comes back. So that leaves us with pretty much the only other option, bishop c5 takes, knight c7, and this one basically you just have to try to visualize until the end. King b4, knight d5 check. Yeah, people are getting it now. King a3, knight c3, and gg. King b2, king b4, a4 is next. Uh, can black try king c4? Yeah, let's, um, yeah, king c4 is a good try. The problem is you're not actually threatening to take the pawn. Because if you come around this way, white just pushes a4. That's kind of a funny, funny detail. Oh, after knight d5. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Let's say here. Right? A4, I think we're not in time. Black takes the knight. So here, and then if king b4, I think we can even do this one. And a3. And we get a kind of like immortal, immortal construction, right? All we need is to defend the pawn behind, right? Not in front. King can never take, and then white's king just approaches and wins easily. People are saying a4 works too, but at which point? After king c4? Because e4 black is taking the knight. Right? Oh, knight e3 check. King b4. Oh, knight c2 check here and a4. Got it. Yeah, this looks like it's working as well. King c4, but then the king is... I mean, yeah, it's a kind of more to calculate, actually. Yeah, I'd rather just go a3 and then we're done. We're done calculating, right? Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, let's go to the next one. Sorry, guys, if I missed your question, there was a, a lot of chats coming in, so I might have missed uh, a line. Uh, but uh, hopefully you can uh, figure it out. Uh, okay, which one should we do next? Actually, yeah, let's do this one. 
Let's see if it lets me in. Oh wow, look at that, we got it. All right, <laughs> white to play, white to play and uh, and win. Uh, many of you guys, yeah, let's do three minutes. Okay guys, so on rook c2, a lot of suggestions for this move. Rook c2, black is gonna play bishop f3. And the idea is that if you have check, king goes to h5 and then black wants bishop g4. So this one is tough to win for white because we're getting bishop g4 and then taking the pawn and white's not really in time there. Okay, uh, let me call on Aryan. Yeah, so here you play rook f6, mm -hmm. bishop e8, rook h6, bishop h5. Okay, bishop h5. And the idea here is basically you zogzwang him, so king g7. King g7. And now king takes h4. Mm -hmm. King to uh, f6. Mm -hmm. King g4. Mm -hmm. Rook h8. Yep. Now it's looks long. White's one move on time. Well, let's say king h4. King f5. King f5 and yeah, that's uh, that's game over. Okay, very good. Nice job. Um, so if this was in the corner here, uh, or not this corner, let's say the opposite color of the bishop, then it would be like a zugzwang. But because black has a move, black is uh, losing. Uh, okay, so actually very, I think actually very useful problem because a lot of times when you have one pawn left, rook versus bishop, you got to be able to hold on to your pawn, otherwise it's just going to be uh, a draw. Although there are even some endgames where rook and pawn against bishop is, is not winning. Um, so other tries here include like rook h2. The problem with this one is black has really strong resource, bishop f3. And then if white pushes h5, there's king g3, and white's not in time to save the pawn. h6 takes h7, bishop e4, and black uh, just makes it. Uh, another try we mentioned, uh, rook c2, again, black goes bishop f3, and uh, the problem is, okay, pawn is hanging, let's say rook c4 check, king h5, and this one is coming in, and black is taking. So, rook f6, rook h6, kind of counterintuitive, but it's using the fact that, okay, black's only try is this, otherwise white's king just comes in and uh, will slowly be able to uh, box black's king out, you know, kick the bishop out, etc. Um, so bishop h5, king here, and okay, black wants to take the pawn, then gets stuck in this pin. And as Aryan pointed out, white has this very nice zugzwang move, rook h8. So this is something that studies often teach you to do because at first glance, it, we know we feel like, all right, if we lose the pawn, then that's it, it's a draw, problem over. But a lot of times studies teach you to like, just try to look a little bit deeper, one move deeper. Um, it's very easy to kind of just assume like, oh, black is fine. But uh, if we learn to develop the skill to just look a little bit deeper, um, this can be very important uh, in our in our calculation. I remember I was solving a, a study once, and uh, I guess I'll just set this one up. Um, my uh, solution ended in uh, this position. It was like this here, and then black's queen was like, here or something and my king was i don't know here and then i was like knight c2 check and white wins <laughs> my coach was like costia just try to look one move deeper <laughs> and uh, of course i figured out what i had uh, what i had missed in the variation i thought i'm winning the queen right game over <laughs> no just try to look one move one move more um okay let's jump to the next one uh, all right let's do this one Okay, we got it. All right, white to play and win. I'm actually gonna give you guys more time for this one. I'm gonna give you up to five minutes because we're getting a little bit uh, harder now. Oh, have you guys seen this one before? Wow, you guys type really fast. Well, if you've seen it, that's fine. Hopefully you haven't seen the next one, but make sure you don't, you don't miss anything if you have seen it. Make sure you give me the right solution.
Okay. I think I did trick some of you because I know the answers you submitted, but <laughs> that's the point of doing these studies because I think they're they're pretty great. Um, let me call on Alex for the answer. So, um, the Mm-hmm, yeah. So, red has rook d8. Mm-hmm. And black has to play king to seven, of course. Then h6 is the sword to move, so we have to play king f6. Mm -hmm. Now we can play a move rook d6. Rook d6, good. So we have to go to d6. Bishop d5, king e5, and bishop f4, mm -hmm. and king f6. So now we can't take the queen because then we'll actually be stalemate. So we have to play e5, which is a great move. So taking a stalemate, we have e5. Yep, queen takes. E5, the beautiful bishop g5 checkmate. Actually, mate. Should but if he doesn't take the queen, then he just he just. Takes it. Then yeah, we can right win this win this yeah, end game. Yeah. yeah, very good, Alex. Nice job. So okay, very easy. To just see you know bishop g5 and bishop f4 and be like okay problem over next one but um yeah in these studies there's often there's often another another trick um and uh in a game it's very important to try and spot this you know before it happens on the board right you don't want to see the stalemate when you've already touched the queen and you're committed to taking it um <laughs> that would be that would be pretty bad so uh, yeah, of course, it's very important to kind of learn. Honestly, the, the lesson here is try to calculate uh, slowly rather than super, super fast. Because when we calculate quickly, we kind of like skip over things and it's very easy to blunder like a uh, simple, simple trick. Um, that's why touching the bishop is better. Yeah, at least grab the bishop first before <laughs> taking the queen. Uh, what if you adjust the opponent's queen? Well, if you said adjust and you adjust it, then, then that's fine, of course, yeah. Um, all right, very good. Very good. Let's go on. Let's keep it going. And uh, let's jump to... Um, I wanted to... All right, let's do this one. This one's by um, Kubel, who's one of my favorite composers. The cool thing about studies is sometimes you find a composer who you uh, really, really like. Okay, it says Moss, but it, it's actually uh, Kubel. Let me give you guys um, five minutes for this one, although we might not need the whole time. And uh, yeah, once you find a composer, you, you kind of like start to appreciate their style. You can like look up a lot of their, uh, a lot of their puzzles and um, yeah, really, you get like a feeling for how they uh, how they create puzzles. This one is by Kubel. I'll write it in in the chat. This is white to play. In fact, pretty much all studies are white to play and win. The reason for that is because like you can just flip the pieces and have it black to play and win. So for simplicity, all studies are white to play. Sorry, not white to play and win, but white to play. There's lots of studies that are white to play and draw. Um, but I like Kubel. I also like Trotsky. Uh, Watawa has some really beautiful studies and um, as well as uh, Rink, or is it Rank? I don't know. I'll, I'll write these names in the chat if you guys want to look up some of these composers, because they really have some really, really beautiful compositions. Oh wait, I'm typing it to uh, Alex only, my bad. Yeah, white to play and win. That's right. Okay, guys. Actually, I don't think anyone got this one in full. So let's go to... Let's think about the key line. And I'll have you guys uh, consider it. So we do start with g6. All right, king h6, rook h5. So king jade is forced, rook takes b6, threatening mate, so black doesn't have time to promote, king f8 is forced. Uh, then white does have a win there. Knight takes c6 is uh, not winning, that one's just black queens and then gets uh, gets enough counterplay with the queen. 
So I'm gonna give you guys another another three minutes for this one. So that's that's the key line. You gotta find we have to find a key resource after king f8. So g6, king g8 takes king f8, and then in that position white to play and uh, and win. Yeah, nice job, Supper. Nice job. Alrighty, let me put this one uh, on the board and then I'll, I'll let Troy explain, but I wanna give you guys a chance to think about it um, from the key position. I mean, this is the kind of moves that studies, if you do enough, they kind of teach you to find this, uh, this type of resource. This is where it's uh, white to play. The pawn is about to promote. Knight takes e6 check is uh, tempting, but it doesn't quite work out in the end. This is where we really have to Kind of expand the search and just looking for all kinds of ideas. Uh, okay, let me look for. Uh, sorry, let me call on Troy. The solution. Okay, so the move here is knight d5. At first, I thought it was just blocking the d file, so our rook can get to it. It's a pawn before promote. So then I realized that after any pawn takes, preferably. Maybe black wants to take the e pawn, mm -hmm. but the threat is rook b8. So then I realized that um, blocking the d file actually can let our king go to d6 without getting checked. So we can go king c5. c5. Yep. So then the threat is we can go rook b1, so they can't try to escape with our king. Mm -hmm. So then they have to promote um, d1, queen, king d6, and then there's no checks and it's game over. B1. Yeah, okay, I mean, black can try, let's say, queen e1 or queen e2. We have check. Moving the queen to the e5 or, or b8, um, e8, queen e8, and then um, an extra c pawn. I think yeah, we just take this one, and yeah, second pawn is falling as well. And uh, you can even play this if you really want to be really want to be uh, <laughs> demonstrating to your opponent how active your king is. But yeah, nice job. Okay, th this one is, of course, uh, very, very tough, guys. I mean, because uh, it's not just about finding, like, this move, knight d5. It is a move you can find, because it does threaten checkmate in one. So we can, can we can definitely call this a candidate move, right? It comes with an obvious threat. But it's also a very easy move to just not even, it's just to not even consider for a second. It's just, like, almost like an invisible move. Um, because the idea just feels so slow. I mean, we let black queen and then we play king d6 and all of a sudden black has like no defense. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, unthinkable, unheard of. Uh, but this kind of stuff can uh, can happen and it's, uh, that's why it's worth doing these puzzles to see like these kinds of extraordinary ideas. So key point here is that the rook is threatening to go to b1 and on knight d5 had black move the king then the knight also is able to uh, drop back and, and stop the pawn. Um, and then after ed5 or cd5, yeah, of course, we get this kind of genius uh, combination. In case you're wondering, you know, how people compose puzzles like this, they actually, they start from this position. They kind of get some kind of like conceptual idea, like, oh, what, what could be a position where a rook outplays the queen and queen is a free move, but no way to stop checkmate. Once you kind of figure out this position, then you like work your way backwards. Like, how can I get here by force? At least that's how, that's how I think they do it. I, otherwise, I, I can't even imagine how <laughs> you would compose such an idea. Um, okay, I want to do. We'll try to do at least one more here. Um, actually, I want to show you guys one more that showed up in a, a real game, just to demonstrate the point that this isn't just. Uh, these aren't just puzzles for the point of you know, aesthetics and art, but these are positions that actually do show up in, in games. And if you're not ready to uh, to find something, then, uh, you know, you could be missing out on a lot of points and half points. Um, okay, so this next one actually was from an open tournament, actually kind of a maybe semi-famous position, so I don't know, some of you might have seen it. Um, but it was white to play in this position. And in the game, White had kind of blundered into this and uh, thought they were now losing uh, and ended up playing the move Bishop takes g5 here, Black promoted and, uh, you know, won the game with uh, the extra queen. Um, instead, I want you guys to try and find White's defense here. How does White save the game? So it's White to play and draw for this one. White to play and draw. And uh, let's do... 
Um, I'll give you guys five minutes for this one. Just make sure you guys are giving me more than one move. You guys are past the level where I'm just going to give you a puzzle where it's like, okay, one move and it's over. <laughs> so, remember guys, there's always, there's always a trick. Okay, time's up. Let me call on uh, Austin here. So the only way to prevent anyone is to clean is 61. And then black, it seems like there should be six checks. You can take your bishop with check. Mm -hmm. But the issue is after king g3, if you take that fourth check, you can put the king on h4. And you kind of sort of built a coffin for your king. And now when he takes your rook, it's still me. So instead, he has to play bishop f5 or something like that. Like king h4, mm -hmm. bishop f5. But then after, like, the g1 check. And then king h6, and then you have this nice move, e6, and it's a draw. Because if you promote, then you can just take the queen and play e7. And then black can't prevent anything than king g4, because he has to stop the pawn. Yeah, this is a good way to um, to force the draw. If, um, let's say, uh, let's say bishop a2 here. Here you can play rook c6, and then play rook b6. Well, we know that doesn't get anything accomplished. Uh, yeah, I think this one doesn't doesn't quite work. Um, I'm pretty sure white has to go rook e1 here. And, uh, okay, if push, just taking in king g4, so black tries king f5. But then you play e6. Now e6, yeah. And actually, I don't know, who's playing for the win? Because... <laughs> B1 takes, takes, E7. Pawn's running away. So yeah, actually this would be, this would be pretty difficult. But I think black can still, still hold it with like bishop D5 and at least take. But okay, of course, white's not losing. Uh, good job. Actually on bishop F5, in fact, I think almost any move is good enough here. Like you can play rook E1 because black is not really threatening um, to promote. Maybe even this is clean as well. Um, because once black promotes, we're just taking king g4 and eliminating the, the last pawn. Okay, nice job, everybody. Um, so now white missed this in the game. Like I mentioned, white ended up playing bishop takes g5 and, and, and quickly lost. Uh, I'm sure he actually, I'm pretty sure he saw rook c1. I mean, this is um, like strong player, like 2400 rated player. Probably in time trouble, probably had like two, three minutes left, you know, 30 second increment. He probably saw this one, but what did he think? He probably thought bishop e6 check, king g3, g takes f4, king takes f4, assumption, and uh, and then black, of course, uh, wins. So what was white's mistake here? In my opinion, like simply didn't slow down enough uh, to kind of truly, truly consider the options. And of course, this is much harder in a game, right? When we're doing a puzzle or in class, like obviously you guys know uh, that there is a solution to be found. In a game, when something like this happens, right, because like black sacrificed a rook, you know, and, and, and got their pawn to b2, you kind of freak out and you're like, oh no, am I losing now? Like, what's going on? It's very easy to convince yourself that you're just losing without really kind of, you know, staying uh, objective and, and looking for the solution. Because in a game, you just don't know if there is a solution, right? That's kind of the, the problem. And I don't really have like a great fix for this. All I can really think of is as you get stronger and, and more experienced, uh, you kind of have to be optimistic. It's like you you have to kind of think to yourself like, okay, if there is a solution here, what would it be? And you almost have to like pretend like there is. So you kind of give yourself the best chance of, uh, of finding it. And if there truly isn't anything uh, to be found, well then, you know, you're lost and the extra effort you put in, uh, you know, it was still, was not wasted because, uh, you know, one time out of 10 or one time out of 20, you will find that kind of like miracle uh, defense, um, but you really have to be confident in, in your abilities and your ability to spot ideas. Um, similarly to the way you guys are like, you know, very confident when you're doing puzzles, you know, there's a solution there. So as soon as you kind of find something, you feel like, oh, that must be it. So important to kind of develop this um, during the game as well. It's, of course, not easy, which is why, I mean, training is super important to see lots of ideas and, and see lots of resources, kind of build up your patterns. 
um, you know, the people that are like the best solvers in the world, like, why are they good at solving? It's not because they're like geniuses. It's because they've solved a lot of puzzles and they have a lot of experience and they've seen a lot of uh, a lot of ideas. So the more training we kind of do, the more solving, the more uh, puzzles and, and ideas we kind of pick up um, over time. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for uh, this class. Hope you had fun. I'll open up the chat for, I don't know, a second before <laughs> where things go, go crazy. And uh, yeah, I will catch you, uh, catch you all next time.